Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Music Talks podcast. I'm your host Bobby Rose. So, if you've been paying attention to the past episodes, you know there's always a theme of、um, a research-based、uh, approach to the episodes.、Uh, we're always delving into different kinds of topics to eventually lead up to an ultimate question or a research question of sorts. But for today, in, in looking at the circumstances that's been happening around us, I felt like.、Uh, It's high time for us to have a、uh, a real episode, an episode where we talk about personal stuff, and not a lot of people get to do that, especially in the music scene. So with me, I have the most real people that I could think of、uh, to share about their experiences in life, and some of these you may know. One of them is a, a Shopee influencer, another one is a juggler, and the other one is a Jeep driver. Uh, you can decide who is who, based on your own.、Uh, if you're familiar with the podcast, you you will know who I'm talking about. But、um, yeah, in all jokes aside, ladies and gentlemen, today again I have my very good friend Arman Malik, the performer. Hey, buddy. Hey, y'all. It's good to be back again. <laughs> good to have you. How's everyone? Thank you. And also, we have、uh, another friend. He's a composer, composition student, a composition graduate rather.、Uh, I'm still in the mindset of a student, actually. Composition graduate, and he has been on the podcast before. He has shared about his experiences,、uh, but only on the audio form. So this is the first time you'll be seeing his amazing face in video format for those watching on YouTube. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Epic Kelly. Hi, everybody. Awesome, and I love that your background with the keyboard. That's so, oh, that's so、Price. inviting. <laughs> Pray tell. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, I have a、uh, yes. There are four people in today's episodes. It is going to be very mind-boggling to a certain point.、Uh, but last but not least, we have another performer who is a music student, music graduate, but a.、Uh, Music person, I consider him a music person in it of itself because of the things that、uh, he does on a day-to-day basis. So he'll share more about his uh, ex- uh, about his life. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Eli. Hi,、hey, what's up, everyone?、Uh, my name is Eli.、Um, it's good, Bobby. How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Are Are you still in Malaysia, or is that a university T-shirt that you're wearing, or something? Uh, no, this is just a shirt that I got off of a bundle shop. <laughs> <laughs> so how how is everyone? Well,、um, so far so good.、Um, of course, we're still stuck in this pandemic. No idea what's going to be happening next. But um, yeah, um, life has been really unexpected lately. So that's that.、Mm-hmm. I I think the freest one right now. I mean, like the one that feels most liberty is Arman on the other side of Malaysia.、Right? You guys are just oh、uh, yeah, we're 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 pretty good. Like despite being in phase three,、um, I think those liberties that we've been given、um, allows us to continuously work.、Um, it helps the economy, but、uh, everyone's but all the while that's happening, everyone's getting vaccinated. Everyone is、um, still able to work at some capacity, so we're quite happy. But we still have to practice our, you know, standard operating procedures.、Um, but yeah, like I've, I've I've still been getting work for some reason, <laughs> and、uh, I mean, like you th- you think that in a pandemic things would just take a slow, like take a slow pace, but work momentum has just been picking up. After a after like one or two weeks, so I'm very grateful that、um, I could still work despite the pandemic. Things have been, yeah, it's Sarawak has been kind to us in knowing how to handle the、uh, the virus and the pandemic. Now you said for some reason. I, I I'm very sure. I'm super confident that that reason is because you're good at what you do. So. Uh well. I'm only as good as the team I work with, so I 
I mean, I'm just a cog in the machine, you know. <laughs> that's a very humble. Yeah, but, um, yeah it, 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 that's a very humble way to say. It. I'm, I'm so sorry. I get, I, I get, I have to butt in on this one because Arman, um, to be honest, like knowing you for a very long time. I know we haven't gotten into this yet, but knowing knowing Arman for a very long time is this dude knows what he's doing. So you know, for people to be having a lot of trust in you and what you do, um, especially in this moment, uh, you know, talking about a pandemic. It's you're doing a good job, man. Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Okay, so talking about our own lives, right? Uh, as I've explained, like, uh, some people that's been listening, tuning into past episodes, they're familiar with uh, Armand's work, and uh, maybe a few of them will be familiar with Epic's work as uh, in his composition line, but we're not really familiar with your dancing career, Eli. So, can you like share about it? Like, how did you start where did you start and and what's the the relation because you were a music student for a time so you did delve into that yep. i mean not not only in, in university but you were a through and through music student and then you translated that into your dancing so give us a can you tell us about that journey right so basically how i ended up with these guys at the end of the day because um i started off i went into uitm uh, uitm Shalom specifically um it was my first time being in the in university so my my only choice was to take music because the reason why i say it's my only choice is because something that i am familiar with even though i'm not really into it but i am familiar with it so uh, what got me into music in the first place is because I, I find the love in people playing instruments live. You get more feeling from that. I don't know how, how you, like, musicians would call it, but for me, I get like a certain feeling every time I hear a certain type of music. It makes me feel like, ah, oh, this is so good. You know, like, I want to hear this live again. And, um, and then I, I started to know you guys uh, in your ITM. And then to find and out then you that you guys that. play you realize that oh no these people are bad like music is a bad influence <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I gotta chime in on that eli i was I gotta chime in on that. that i still remember the first time that uh like we get there uh when during the orientation in uh yeah. uitm right so i remember you get very emotional listening to I, if I'm not mistaken, it was one Mazam playing. Was it Canon? Was it Canon? If I'm not mistaken, it was Canon in D. I, but you were the one who caught the emotion of the song somehow because it was yeah. played live, just casually in front of us while we were gathering. So I felt, yeah. I felt like that actually was kind of uh, like interesting to me because I never had that experience live in my like in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I, I can agree with you on that because um, a lot of times during the time from, uh, back when we, were, when we were in UITM and then we had like all the gatherings. Remember that one time after Kasatria, we had to go for that uh, formal event at night? Uh, at we MDS. were all wearing like, yeah, at, at MDS. And then we, I was the host. Remember you guys kept on texting me when my phone was in my pocket, just try to bug me out. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, now everyone remembers. Don't worry. Right. I just had to point that out for everyone. Okay. So anyways, when that happened, during, during, that, during that specific time, now, that was like one of the times where, um, aside uh, from what I told us just now, that was like one of the first times um, she was playing, I, I don't remember who exactly. It was a girl, she was playing the flute, uh, she was playing it live, there was no music company in the background, it was just her with the flute, but what she was playing really got to me for some reason. And I remember standing aside and I was like, my, my tears started coming down. I was like, oh man, what is going on, you know? And at the end of the day, I was like, okay, then maybe there's a certain connection between music and even I'm not an expert or a professional or anything, I'm pretty much just enjoying the fact that whatever tunes come into it, what, how it makes me feel is what I take into account. And then, you know, that, that rushes into every part of my body, you know, giving me like different types of emotions. It, it depends on the music. Either it's the good vibe or sad music or jazz, funk. It can go about like anything, but 
it still it, it will still give me like a certain sort of feeling it makes me feel better when i'm listening to that music in that particular moment yeah um but sadly uh, throughout my whole time in uitm i only stayed for one semester as everyone knows okay so as everyone knows um all these guys down here know um i was in uh, uitm but i wasn't there for long i actually dropped out uh, after one semester because real reason i really could not keep up with the uh music education like i was pretty slow i wasn't doing so well so i you know took my chances i dropped out looked for another university i ended up in lim kok wing and did my diploma in performing arts which was a very unexpected journey because i i was there for four years and throughout the whole four years it felt like more than four years now it wasn't because of how the education was running and everything no it was actually what was happening in between those times when you know when i'm in class out of class what i'm learning what i'm going through all the events that i have to be doing and whatnot and then especially going up um learning how to be host i started being host when i was 15. um so you know it put me into a lot of places and then i ended up falling into dancing now dancing came about when i was 15. that's a whole long story um it's a typical story uh, i came from step up who wanted me to dance even more i ended up dancing even more than i did or even expected at the end of the day um way more than jabberwocky here right? sorry no definitely not no they are amazing those guys are like top notch but they are actually one of my um i would say inspirations to start dancing i started off copying yeah. jabberwocky and um, i don't remember all, there, there was some other group i just don't remember but jabberwocky was like one of them I was like addicted because they were wearing a mask. Now, this really somehow this can actually relate to music for me because when 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 I'm dancing, I will I will always have a certain type of expression going on, and I believe each and every one of you has seen that on my video. <laughs> now, this expression comes because of how the music makes me feel. Now, I was told by a friend of mine that you know when you dance, feel the music, have fun, bring the party. So. Those are the kind of things I imply when I'm dancing or when I'm listening to music, you know, which is kind of cool. And now I am dancing on the side. Um, I'm not doing it as a career, Bobby, just letting you know. Um, I wish it could be a career, but, you know, in Malaysia, it's really not a big thing. But um, it's something I do to express myself, you know, how I feel. I, I'm not really doing it for anything else. I just want to do it for myself because that's how I feel happy. I let it go to dance and things like that um and i'm i'm just a regular worker i work uh, 95 every single day as per usual but obviously during the pandemic work hours changed um so four by four and music plays a whole big role in my life as well because going on adventures while hearing good music uh, i i believe you guys can relate to me like when you drive you need to have good music right so <laughs> absolutely absolutely is, exactly Exactly. So good music when you're driving is super important. So that goes in between. Now, that creates a whole different vibe altogether. You know, when you're driving, you have good music, you'll be, you're be able to be more focused on what you want to do throughout that whole specific time that you're in. So, yeah, that, that, that's pretty much my, my journey as an early start for now. We'll get more into it later. That's, that's a very, that's an awesome story because it shows how... Um... Ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand the dynamic of uh, our group. Uh, the two of them, Epi and Arman, they're very technically inclined for music because they're literally writing songs, arranging songs, arranging scores, performing everywhere. And I'm more of the researcher. I'm looking at the sociological, psychological aspect of music. But Eli, it's, um, there was a term that I was using recently. Uh, it's musical innocence. And it's pretty much explained by how he he described it. He has transcendental experiences when it comes to music that can't be explained. But because actually in the real world, not a lot of people can technically explain music or, or technically explain why they like that music, how it seeps into their soul. But, but he is a prime example of it, which is a reason why we, the four of us, clicks together. So thank you so much for sharing that one. Now, Arman, what about your side? Okay, well, uh, before 
before I met you four, uh, um, sorry, met you three, uh, coming to UITM, I was, I've already, I was already on a path where um, I wanted to do music ever since I was 15. So a lot of factors factored in. Um, I had supportive parents. Uh, my dad wanted something for me that he never got in his youth. So he sort of projected and channeled all of that into me. And um, it all started with practicing and learning piano at the age of seven. I joined my marching, my school's marching band when I was 13. And the teacher, uh, his name is Marvin Jong. And with all that guidance, um, I, was, I made my first public performance when I was, uh, I was like no older than 14. And it was so, it was amazing on the path that I was because I was learning all these skills that I wouldn't expect to need till I was out of high school. So coming out of, um, coming out of high school, I really wanted to do music out the gate. And I already had some knowledge that got me through most of the diploma modules. So coming to UITM, when I met you guys, it was sort of one by one, you know, I met Bobby first and then Eli and then Apit. So with you guys, you kind of gave me a moral and sort of helped me get know my way around the environment, especially coming from a place like Kuching Sarawak, but where I was really comfortable. So coming into a new area like Shalam with you guys, um, your support and your friendship and the times we had like it really shaped those experiences really shaped me into what I am. Okay. And then, <laughs> so, I mean, classes were like, acing the classes were fun, but I had the most fun when we were like out walking and talking about these experiences and even had going to each other's concerts. I remember starting from my second semester, um, Apit did like, he wrote f- music for an, what was it? An opera? No, it was a, it was a play. Musical. I think it was yeah, a musical. Yeah. 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 That was, that was great. Cause like you were probably like one of the first to just really go out there and you spend like, Oh God. like numerous sleepless nights working on music and I'd knock on your door Ooh. and you'd just be a total wreck. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I remember was right about me being a wreck, but it was worth it. No regrets. I actually enjoyed every part of the musical uh, that I was assigned for to arrange. Um, mm. That's great. Uh, so, and from then on, you continued working and finding more work as a as a writer, as an arranger and composer. All the while um, we were studying. So after, af- I think after we graduated, I mean, it was such an amazing feeling that we both, that you and me, uh, a bit, we both got one of the highest honors in our diploma program, where we, I think, we got the uh, graduate bike. Like for me, it was the academic aspect. And for you, because of your contributions to society, to the different student societies, you got that based on like how you worked well with other people. So that's one of the traits that I admired about you um, with Eli is definitely his, his very, like, how do I, how do I put this? You, you have a stronger connection. To, you appreciate music, even if it's just like a simple concept that, me and Bobby and Apit would take for granted. You find you find gold in, like the. Simplicity. I would say yeah. You you find dime yeah. You find gold in the simp- simplest of things. Mm-hmm. Essentially, like you can already see the diamond even if it's still coal. Yeah. So and with Bobby, I mean, when I when I met him, he was like a proper analyst. He was like, I mean, he still is, but he was just like, a, he was just like a machine and like human form but like i get and i could see that you know we we both were missing something in our lives like a sense of companionship and like like a really someone to really talk to and all that so um we i sort of found that connection with bobby as well and and it's prop and it's so and it's amazing how 
all four of us still talk to each other despite the drastic um, changes and differences in our schedules and our lifestyles. Like, like it's, I mean, we've done this years before the pandemic even separated us. So it's, it's amazing. Um, like, like I, I would always miss those times and always look fondly upon those. I have your photos constantly on my walls when I'm in the United Kingdom, when I'm in England studying. So yeah, you know, it's always it's always by my bedside when I go to sleep and think about dreading classes because I mean UITM was pretty easy in on the music side. I mean learning, but like when you really go beyond what your your scope and capacity, it can really take a toll, especially when you're learning music at I'd say the highest level or beyond what you're beyond what you're capable of so coming back to Malaysia it's probably one of the best things that ha that's happened um, happened to me despite the pandemic I was able to get work but working has been the most fun since um, taking a gap year from you a lot of and it's great that Bobby's been doing a lot of podcasts as well and has invited me and Apit before to get in on the fun and help build something together. So yeah. my greatest, um, possibly my greatest uh, joy that I've had is being able to help people I've known over like several years and to come up with extraordinary um, projects and, you know, music essentially. And this is the kind of experiences that I hope to carry forward and as I grow and mature as a musician in whatever scope that may be, whether it's a, as a performer or as a arranger and conductor. I'm on, I'm going to be honest with you, man. That was one heck of a story. I mean, it's the truth. Um, to those of you who don't know, the four of us were actually uh, roommates uh, or housemates at one, at one time back when we were staying in Maranti. Yep. Um, Countless nights, we would head out to McDonald's. We would just chill and, you know, just have make D and we'll walk back. And honestly, that's just something that we do almost every other day. Like, we'll wait for each other after class. Now, this is like a very bromance part of our whole friendship that's happening, you know. Yeah. Like, we'll wait for each other. We'll send each other back. And I remember during the days where um, Bobby would trick me into getting on his bike. So he could send me back if I didn't have to wait for the bus. But the worst part about this is that I didn't have a helmet on, you know, thanks to this dude. Right here. <laughs> I remember being, I, I, I falling for his tricks three times. The last one, I, I can still vividly remember. It's like, yeah, sure, I'll send you to the bus stop. <laughs> Next thing I know, this dude was like on his way back to Maranti. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> like going 80 on a, you would think, ladies and gentlemen, you would think after the first time or the second time, you would learn his lesson, but nah. No. <laughs> Never did. Never did, honestly. But it, he got me home at the most right times ever. <laughs> In regards to that, you know, Bobby was a really good motorcyclist. Like, especially as it, when it comes to oh. like carrying passengers, i.e. all, and I'm talking about all three of us, because... Not not at the yes. same time to ride or like I don't know how, but Bobby just finds a helmet like the first everywhere he goes. Like I th I think there are times where you just snatch someone's like a rando's helmet from out of nowhere, and then just as you're done sending me, you send that helmet back. <laughs> like I'm not sure what you've done with those helmets. I mean, it you just send to back. find. I promise you, send back. Yeah, okay. It, it's, okay. It's between us, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like, like, ladies and gentlemen, just in case, like, you might, you might find it will cut. You'll cut to a scene where you see all the helmets back in this room somewhere <laughs> that couldn't be returned. <laughs> and because I was carrying all, like, at least I had, I had two saxophones, like, to carry in between the, in between me, me myself and Bobby, and there'd be times we'd be going through tight slits of traffic and i'd have to switch my positions with the case because it was so damn long <laughs> and that was on the smaller bike not even on the bigger one before i right my surgery yeah 
yep. Sonic, right? Yeah, the name Sonic. of the bike. I still remember. Oh my God! Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I remembered. Yeah. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, just to that was a thank you so much for sharing on on that Armand. and just to summarize his journey, like where he came from. I'll, I'll just give you a very short story. Because of his uh, Yamaha uh, scholarship, when you pass by, there was like, I don't know, a, a period of a month, I think, when you pass by the main gates of UITM, you would see like his face and receiving the scholarship for just like, and it was sprawled over the main gates of UITM. Yeah, that just summarizes his achievements <laughs> at that young age. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, what about you, Epic? Before, uh, you know, like after what Arman said about your development and all. So where where did you come from before the end? All right. So my story. Before I begin to tell my story, I want to take this chance to firstly uh, thank Bobby Roast uh, for having us all here, which is I I find it very very cool and i'm very honored to be here because the first time around when i was talking to Abin in, in in his podcast uh program it was a uh, an audio as per mentioned uh so i'm honored to be here today with uh like some like a bunch of my favorite people in this world so thanks to bobby second shout out goes to everybody Thank you for having me in my life still and look at us oh my god doing podcasts together well Okay, um, uh, I want to start with um, just a recap because I'm not sure whether I have, I have like mentioned this in the previous uh, podcast or like anywhere on my social um, media or whatever. But as it when it comes to music, I I knew since I was a kid, since I was a kid that um, as young as I was in kindergarten. When I was in kindergarten, I knew that I liked music so much because I, like, it started out uh, with just me singing song in my family, right? Um, but then my real uh, adventure began in high school. So that's when I first started uh, taking uh, music in a different kind of setting where I joined a marching band. I believe Arman and I are uh, quite similar in terms of that, where we begin, uh, well, but I, I believe Arman is uh, much, much more experienced than me because of uh, all the experiences that he has uh, gathered over the years. But I started in the marching band first when I was 13, and then uh, throughout five years, that's when I picked up saxophone, um, saxophone to play, and I changed uh, my main route of um, so-called ambition or whatever goals that I might have had before music was, I wanted to be a doctor first. So I've always wanted to be a doctor. So music was kind of a side thing until I was in uh, high school and 17, I changed my mind because I felt like, okay, I could do this, why not? So I met uh, my music teacher, who's very dearly to me, who plays an important role in this uh, decision changing, who introduced me to uh, such, it's a vast, it's a vast world where, uh, I mean, music is an art form, yes, but m music works differently. Like there's so much sub, uh, category, category of music, you know, like you, you might just like listening to music uh, on daily basis through radio, which uh, like common public would do. But the way we, you, we, when you start to become a music scholar yourself, it, it, it changes your perspective. You kind of have to expose yourself more into what music really is. So my journey in university University, which was UITM, when I met these guys, uh, was rather uh, miraculous because I believe it's a it's a destiny, uh, like set by God. Because, I mean, we, I'm not sure about you guys, but I don't know how it happened when we met during the orientation uh, week. We somehow clicked, 
and that ended up uh, moving into the same, uh, well, let's call it house, because I feel like Maranti, which was our first college at that time, a hostel college. Uh, it's a house, it's like a, a flat, small flat. And then we get that all of us, and I find it very, uh, me being me, of course, it was, uh, it took time for me to expose myself to you guys. Uh, but eventually, I thank you guys so much for embracing me. Like, um, so, like what I, Arman reminded me of just now, it, I was actually moving kind of all around the place with uh, music when it comes to uh, studying, uh, doing a freelance uh, task whatever but I enjoyed doing every bit of it so when it comes to music I know I mean the cliche way to see it is that somehow I cannot deny you know like the spark that I have I'm, I'm not sure how you guys would put it in words but I would put it in words that the spark in my my whole being when I listen to music so, uh, well, at, at this point for now, after listening so uh, like to many tra tracks and still discovering new music, um, I find myself thinking more and more how music can change people's lives. I guess like in that way. So, uh, moving on to like career-wise or whatever. As for now, during the pandemic, uh, I'm just grateful that I still have a day job to survive on. Nevertheless, I still do on the side as much as I can uh, during my free time to uh, write my own music, which I have uh, drafted during my study years that I never touched long, like uh, years ago. So, uh, it would be cool to know that this podcast is one of the platforms that I'm in uh, and to talk about it, it, it keeps my machine fresh and to just, you know. Yeah. It's actually yeah. awesome when you put it that way because it sounds serendipitous. It sounds like, a, and I always believe this, like a, all roads lead here. So th this is yeah. actually... Yeah, this is actually going to lead to the second question, which I was going to ask you guys. So like, uh, are you, you know, you know because we, we've known each other since 2004, it's seven years now, since 2014. So it's been close to a decade. Right? So the, the question I was going to ask you guys uh, is that, are you better off today? And before you guys answer, I just want to share that. I feel like we are all better off today than we were close to a decade ago despite all the ups and downs, despite the pandemic, because see, um, let, you know, I won't beat around the bush. Three out of four of us are not doing music professionally. You know? Only one out of four of us are getting paid to do. But yet, with all these um, uh, difficulties, the toughness of the world, and, you know, brought about by this pandemic, you know, because it's been embedded within us, I feel like we, it's, not to say in a bad way, in a negative light, but we have no, no choice, nothing else to run to besides the essence of music. But, but what about you guys? Do you guys think that uh, we were better off than we were a decade ago? To put it, uh, let me answer that question in a very simple term first. Like, uh, do I feel like I'm better off uh, than I was uh, back then? Or like, uh, in the past times or whatever in terms of music definitely yes uh, but it's important for me to uh, state that everything that I brought or experienced or listened to or influenced by it I, I don't necessarily disregard them at this point of life uh, in fact I've gotten more in touch with my own self with my own uh, self who might have liked different different kind of uh, vibes, uh, different different kind of music when I was interesting. Because uh, if you guys remember when we 
uh, we're hanging out. We do share uh, some of our uh, music library that we listen to, right? So we oh, can I'm see from that this. moment how everybody, yeah, everybody was just listening to different, different stuff, but somehow we can connect with each other. So I feel like now, for me personally, I'm, I'm reconnecting to uh, the music that I uh, connect the most, which is uh, currently, of course, it's alternative, uh, but I still don't disregard uh, the other music that I have gotten the chance to uh, learn and was exposed to during my study years, which was uh, more, I would call it the heavier genres because these are very technical and stuff. Uh, and then uh, we have classical jazz. Uh, and then of course, nowadays people still, uh, the popular music is uh, still venturing into a new sound. If you guys are checking it out on TV or radio, because it's a transition, you know, like how back then people were changing from. Uh, if it, let, okay, let's take jazz, right? How it, right. Uh, how it moved from, uh, Arman, you can correct me on this because my, my history on jazz might be rusty. Mm. But well, yeah, I, I remember during one of <laughs> our class, um, one of our classes where Mr. Patrick uh, casually introduced us to the intro of uh, jazz when it started, uh, was it in Dix Dixieland? Where oh, oh, I like that. Okay. Yeah, right. okay. You're going to chime in. Go. What I'm going to chime in. That? Okay. First of all, uh, I like how you use the word Dixieland, but you'll if you remember back then in fusion ensemble class, Mr. Patrick doesn't like that word Dixieland. It's sort of a oh, okay. it's sort of like yeah, it's sort of like a term. taboo word. Yeah, it's a derogatory term yeah. to denote New Orleans jazz. So mm. New Orleans and Chicago jazz, they are more or less the same sound aesthetically, and they were developed around the same time. So yeah, jazz it's sort of like that's sort of like the melting pot of all the styles that came before it in terms of what the African community in, in America has contributed. So if you got blues from the Mississippi Delta, you got uh, the ragtime music of Scott Joplin, and then you've got the spiritual music of the gospel church and all of that just coming together. And, oh, and also the marching band music, you know, that, Louisiana. that is a tradition that is like a tradition of uh, New Orleans where you play on not just birthdays and happy celebrations. You also play on funerals and anything unfortunate. Everything sort of is music is sort of that. Um, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it a soundscape. It's, so, it's sort of part it's and a parcel melting pot. of, yeah, it's the, it's New Orleans was the melting pot of all those styles. And because music was pretty much bread and butter, it's pretty much part and parcel of life, everyday life in new orleans that it's no surprise that when music becomes too popular in one place somehow the worldly powers that be forces mu that music and culture to move to another part of the states and slowly and slowly over the years the music changes of course with the times and with technological advances but with jazz you know it's now become a world language it's no longer just it's no longer um america's special gift it's sort of it is a gift to the world if if that um if that helps answer your question so yeah jazz, jazz is a heavy subject yeah it, it is <laughs> which you just said it's one of the heavy stuff yeah and you just yeah. summarized it like very amazingly in like two minutes so that's so, right. yeah. yeah so ladies and gentlemen if you are interested uh mr patrick turbrack uh not sure if he's been mentioned before, but Mr. Patrick Turbert, you can check him out. He he performs quite a bit in, in Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. And he was, he still is, I think, teaching jazz classes in UITM, you know, University Technology Mara. So you can actually yeah. check him out. So I think you were saying. Yep. So let me summarize. Um, I'm going to take this chance to uh, like summarize my, me answering this Despite uh, where I came from with music, definitely now I can say that, of course, I'm still learning. I believe everybody is still learning. However, my goals and um, target has, has been uh, changed drastically because 
uh, I took it took some time. It took some quite a long time like, for a person actually to to realize that why in the first place you did, did it because uh, I did it uh, with a fresh mindset that I I was a sponge absorbing stuff, you know, absorbing a lot of knowledge and as much as I can, of course, as much as I can do my full capacity. But then uh, as soon as I finished my degree, I was still, uh, by the time I finished my degree, I was uh, already playing in different, different kind of settings where it helped me experience uh, the surrounding and the kind of, um, how I would say environment, if I were to play in, let's say orchestra, let's say bands in, uh, in a duo. So these are the kind of settings in Malaysia, particularly. I'm not talking about international because I believe they have an even larger network, but Malaysia, we are not bad. Uh, a lot of people uh, think that, I mean, a lot of people that I know commonly, they, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are not uh, exposed to this kind of music, but I was uh, blessed and uh, I'm grateful enough to the fact that I was exposed to. So these kind of experience changed my perspective and I decided that, um, okay, so of course I know that uh, I can play a saxophone, but Arman is the, of course, the sifu here. I gotta, you know, gotta push up, you know, push you up, Arman, of course. But, okay. um, <laughs> Hello, girl. Like, okay. Um, your your technicality is un undoubtedly is one of the most like amazing thing I've seen when I was in UITM actually. And you helped me grow as a musician as much as I wanna deny it annoyingly, but yes. Yeah. It helps. <laughs> it helps. I, I am you. grateful actually. <laughs> Eventually, I realized that if there was no Arman, I don't think I would have worked uh, as hard when you were not around or whatever. But yeah, oh. uh, but oh, my okay. goals are changing. Uh, for more on that, uh, you guys can now stay tuned. Okay, there. That's a very inspiring thing when you say it that way because, yeah, that's. That's one of the best things about the four of us is that we do push each other and and like encourage one another. We we actually um, inspire each other to do more and more. With with, with or without. Oh, what what about Arman or Eli? What, what do you guys think? Well, okay. So on that like on that thread, I mean, even after even after we've all left UITM or we're in we're carrying on in some part of our lives we're always keeping tabs on each other asking us um asking each other hey what are you doing now and then we and sometimes some of us would feel bad because there'd be points in our lives where they would be where our productivity or our activity in our lives would be just stagnant so mm -hmm. in a way it's it's not it's not so much of a demotivator as in like because knowing knowing each other for so long they we know that we want good things to happen to each other so for so like i i remember for a time during 2017 2018 i wasn't i was still grieving um my dad's my dad's passing and like i just put all my studies on hold you know like just getting gigs every now and then and then i remember at some conversations with bobby he'd be like oh so you're not doing much now aren't you <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, but you know, I'll get there. It's all like younger he, Bobby. He's all about he's like he was like I mean, with for I mean Bobby, obviously like he really meant well when he when he wanted me to get back on the get back on the, the horse of horse so I could get um going with my life again in terms of music whether it's studying or working. So you know I've always been. Um, I think even with like the hardships that we face, I think having a strong faith in a higher power, um, especially like for me, it'd be God in that he always has a plan. Even if things go south, even if, um, people tell you otherwise, 
you just trust in the process that you'll get to a better place. So if, if it's still, if, yeah, if things aren't going the way you'd want other people or the way you think you had wanted it to just, you know, just wait a little, just wait a little longer, just wait another second, just wait another day. But in the, in that meantime, you just keep working and doing what it is that you like to do. And for me, that's, that's, that's practice. That's to keep listening to music and to help others, you know, like I don't see, I don't take jobs as like jobs in music as sort of like a, as sort of something you have to do to earn money. It's sort of like, what can I do to help? You know, what, what, how can I be of service to my fellow man? So, yeah. Well, um, I actually agree with Arman. I'm not going to lie because you know, at the end of the day, it all it all falls down to where we are now, instead of where we were before. You know, instead of you know, trying to like play around with what's going to be happening next, just be grateful where we are now. You know, I agree with that. Um, well, I for me, I think you know, relating to the question that Bobby asked, um, you know, I I didn't really fall into music that easily for me i was just listening to music i was just trying to understand what music actually was and you know to find that it was actually a lot more going on underneath what you call music it's like a whole different story altogether i managed to experience that but i didn't manage to ace it didn't really matter to me but what i experienced throughout that whole time understanding what music was all about is like it's a whole other story altogether because for me again um as i mentioned earlier i started being uh, more into the music scene uh, when I was 15. I was working as a DJ at the Sunway Pyramid ice skating rink. Uh, now, this was during, like, I was in school. All was good. It was during the long holidays that we had in, back in November and December, you know, that one, a month and a half holiday. Yeah. So I was the DJ. Um, I managed to land a job uh, working with uh, music scene production. Uh, one of the companies I'm still working with up till today, part-time uh, host. Now, when I first started working, I didn't really understand, you know, like music. Yeah, just play whatever music you have. You know, that's what I think. That, that was kind of thoughts that I had in my head. And then, you know, weeks, no, days, weeks went by. And I started to realize that, you know, if you put on better music, people will actually enjoy skating around the ring. Yeah, obviously, you are going in circles. Going in circles, you're doing the same thing over and over again. Obviously, you won't want something else to change. At least whatever that's traveling into your ear and going back up. Now, and then I, I was like, yeah, okay, let's, let's start to find music that people would actually want to hear. Yeah, you know, trending music or music people never heard before, but it's actually a good vibe, that sort of thing. And then, you know, I started playing all those kinds of music and I started to realize that, damn, it actually makes me feel like another sort of way. Now, growing up from that, I didn't really do much in the music scene. Um, I only play... Like gamelan, like literally, I just play gamelan because I grew up having a gamelan set. Um, my 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 parents always carried around, around a gamelan set back when they were working in Tungano. So that would be the only thing that I'll be playing, and I would be playing Timang Burong hours and, you know, just playing the same thing over and over again from the opening to the whole music and then to the ending and then doing the same thing over and over again just because I enjoy what I'm hearing, even though I don't understand what it's all about, like. To be honest, up until today, I don't, I still do not understand music. I'm still learning about this whole music, like this whole thing people call music, but music is just not what you listen to. And as I said just now, music, there's a whole list that goes down under the word music. And it's just something that people really don't see. And what goes into it being music is like a big, it's a really, really big thing. People might just waste their time listening to like three, four minutes of music but don't, don't really understand what goes on behind that. Now, I find the beauty in that because I like to listen to like the details and the music. I, I didn't know why I just did that. <laughs> I did the details in the music. <laughs> so then um, I started, no, this, is, this one is, a, I don't know if it's a bit off topic or not, but um, I started investing in like, you know, good earphones and, that's when I started to understand like, oh, the details that goes into the music is like crazy. And back then I had no idea what BPM is, um, w- you know, the 4-4. The, the four, four. I had no idea what all those things were. I was just like, damn, this music is legit. You know, I want to listen to this all the time. 
going into that, years go by, URTM came about. That's why I was like, you know, when I met Arman, Bobby, Apit, um, these guys actually opened up my whole um, music uh, life. Not another part of me that I, I, did, I never thought I would discover. Um, as also, like I said, as, as uh, what Apit mentioned earlier and also what uh, Arman mentioned and Bobby mentioned, I am not a music student. <laughs> I dance. And that's how I fall into music. And the music that I listen to now, the genres that I listen to now are different than what I used to listen to back then. Now, back then, uh, when I started to know you guys, I was mostly listening to, like, jazz. You know, I was listening to R&B. But Mr. it was Woodnot. mostly jazz. Mm. Mr. Woodnote. Oh, I remember Mr. Woodnote. <laughs> that was like Mr. Woodnote. That was, like, that was, like, the peak of music for me because... Um, Back then, I used to do like beatbox quite often, and you know, some of you guys know that when we had our random music sessions in the in the in the studios, I'll yeah. be beatboxing, or uh, Bobby will be, you know, playing playing with the um, Bobby saxophone playing casing, what, and then... playing whatever's in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even, like, even I, we, we use everything around us as like music, which was kind of cool. The, it, and it's something that I always see in a video. Now we all. Pretty much in our lives, I think when we grow up, we will see like all these cool videos of people making music with with everything that they have around them, which to me was kind of cool. That's how I wanted to learn more about music, even though I didn't really ace it that well as much as um, the, tree, uh, the, the other three. But I was happy enough to know that I learned a lot about music, not just through education, but through uh, my friends that I have known since like almost a decade ago, like seven years ago. Um, to compare that to where I am now, definitely I understand music a whole lot better, even though there are some things that I actually forgot. Um, but for me, a, you know, a good music will always be good music. And you know, when it's a good music that you can't really find it. Good music for me is like underground music. The songs that you will never hear on the radio, songs that you will never hear on Spotify. Or whatever. You really have to dig deeper way into all of that to get to like a gem that you never thought you would <laughs> actually find out. And uh, most interestingly, um, aside Mr. Woodnote, um, I was introduced to Dave Brubeck by Armand. Oh. My most oh, favorite track that. from this dude. <laughs> my most favorite track from this dude. I believe everyone should know this by now. Uh, it's called Take Five. Okay. Yep. When Armand yeah. played that for me that one time uh, on, on your laptop, I think we were in the library listening to music. I, I don't really remember, but I remember okay. listening to that for the first time. And when he, as soon as he played the saxophone, it was just like, yo, that, that was amazing. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, just sorry to cut you, uh, just, sorry to interject. Ladies and gentlemen, that is one of the things you should never do. Okay? I know we're music students, but libraries, playing music in there, just don't. You know, don't follow us. <laughs> but, I yeah. mean, no, but because Bobby, the way we... there was a music yeah. room in the library. I mean, there used to be until yeah, yeah, yeah. the piano. But, but for the people listening uh, listening to this like out of context, they'll be like, oh, these guys just like went into the middle of the library. And yeah, just, they're blasting up music <laughs> out in the library like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so when I ended up listening to Dave Brubeck's Take 5, I was curious to know, was there any other versions of the song in particular? Mm -hmm. So I ended up with uh, North East Ska Jazz. Um, Arman, I don't know if you've heard of them before or oh, have I, you guys I, heard of I'm them before. Sure but they, made like, they made like a reggae dub um, version of Take 5. And I'm just like, this is how big music can get, you know. You can take the same music, you can turn it into absolutely anything you want. Now, this falls in, onto me as well as being a, a dancer. Like, I could take a, a, a specific kind of music and I can turn that into something that I wanna, I'm trying to tell you guys or I'm trying to express or I'm trying to, like, showcase or whatsoever. But, no, sorry. That's no buzz. No, this is, you know, these are the kind of things when, you know, when, when music comes into action, it, like I said earlier, and I'm, I will always, always remind myself this, that music it's not just music, it's everything that goes on around it that makes it music. It's, it's amazing when you put it that way because, you know, out of all the things that we individually pick up, 
since seven years ago, all the way until today, like as we're recording this episode, one common thread that all of us uh, are stating is that compared to last time, now we know what we don't know. Before this, yeah. we, ha- we had a sense of idea of what we know and what we like. And then whatever we don't know, nah, don't worry about it. But I think one of the biggest, um, one, one of the biggest uh, success that we we're talking about now is that at least now we know what we don't know. And we're not just stopping that. Yeah. But, you know, uh, Apit said it's like with a saxophone playing. Okay, that's good. Then you know you, you still have ways away. And then Aman said you, you were stagnant at one point. That's good. That means there was a point that, uh, you know, a lot of people face this, like you were in a funk and then you had to move out of it. And Eli is like, you know, you're still enjoying the music and then you find that there are all these certain elements. So the idea that now we're able to at least more intricately understand the spirit of music, I would say that we, yeah. we're better off. Yeah. That, that I would agree. Because um, let, let me add up to that. Um, one, one thing that I find most interesting is... Um, you know how, it, when 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 a certain type of music is played, right, and you have certain instruments behind those musics. Now, let's say you have the saxophone, you have the synthesizer, uh, things like that. You you can pretty much shape the sound however you want it to be shaped. And you know when when I fall into context when I say it, it's like the details that goes into it. The 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 type of sound that's been played from that certain instrument tingles with some sort of feeling in your body and it makes everything sounds better. It makes you feel like, oh, I like that sound. And I believe like Arman can relate to this and Apit and Bobby as well because you guys, you know, when, when you guys create your own music and you hit a certain note, you're like, wait a second, let's try that again. Arman, I know you just cry it often because I see it on your story. So I believe this is, I know for me, I, I'm, I don't play any sort of instruments anymore, um, especially the government. I haven't touched it for a long time. When, when it, it's just that when you hear that certain sound coming from that certain instrument, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a synthesizer. It has like a bunch, could have a billion sounds and it can still give you a certain type of experience or a certain type of feeling at the end of the day. So definitely I agree with the spirit of music because I believe that is the spirit like, you know, transferring their energy to us through music. In the, not, not in a creepy way, but in the most subtle trying to understand what music is all about kind of mm-hmm. yeah awesome so now that we've all shared like where we've been and you know subsequently like how we're doing today and now that we realize that i don't know we are we are better off than where we are now where do you think you you guys will go in terms of your professional development it, like generally where do you think you guys will go from here not necessarily in the near future because it's, you know, in, in light of the, mm-hmm. of the world right now, it's not an easy thing to decide. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what are your plans with mm-hmm. thoughts? Um, well, I'd like to be working on an international platform, sort of like on the plane, whether on that sort of level, maybe in the next five years or it might have, it could happen sooner. But um, what I know is my, in my work, I have definitely worked up to that level, especially um, working nationally, uh, doing a lot of music and being of service to my state. And uh, we've definitely hit a sort of awareness nationally in Malaysia. So the only way, the only step forward from there is just to go above and beyond and go uh, international. So, So I'll be going back to Birmingham um, later this year to finish my degree. I hope to do my master's. Uh, that's my goal. I hope to get that. And then, inshallah, God willingly, maybe I could just get a job over in over in England and find work there and hopefully something will turn up. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite positive about that. And especially after, after what we've, after having this session with all of you four, it just reinforces my resolve to go above and beyond and perform extraordinarily well in music. I feel like that's the Malaysian dream to just not be in Malaysia. Yeah, what about you guys, uh, Eli and Epit? 
Well, I guess uh, on my side of the story, I would say I'm, I'm just going to still keep on exploring, you know, no matter how old I get, keep on exploring, keep on trying new things, keep on trying things that I've never tried before, you know, in terms of music and um, exploring and discovering the art scene. You know, it's, it's vast. Like Apit uh, like said before, it's, it's very big. There's a lot to it. Uh, it's not just the surface. There's a lot of technicality that goes through it, especially when it comes to dancing as well for me. Um, there's a lot for me to learn. Even though I learned quite a few things, but there was still much more things that I didn't really understand. And I'm still uh, learning that up till today as we speak. So from here on, definitely, you know, um, no matter what it might be, never stop exploring, you know, never stop trying something new, something that you've never tried before and you feel like can benefit you in a very good way, I would suggest to just like go for it. Even for myself, I'm definitely going for it. Every single time that's a new chance for me to try out something new, I'm definitely going to take that chance because it's a rare opportunity and you never know when it's going to come around again. You know, um, try to say, and that goes for all of us, especially um, Arman, which is in the music industry fully right now. You know, when you get a certain offer for a job, you don't, you're not going to get that again. You know, like... <laughs> Unless if you accept it, you do well, that dude is going to call you back. That, you know, that's a whole different story. Of it. But, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about it in like a bigger context, keep on going. You know? Just try out Thanks, every single time. Like, uh, honestly, I, for me in dance, I just want to try do something that's never been done before, you know, which is going to be quite hard. But again, it comes with exploring, trying out new things that I've never tried before and pretty much doing, doing better every single time. Yeah. As for me personally, realistically, um, I would want to finish my master studies. That would be the goal. Of course, one of the goals that I want to achieve for sure because I'm in it and I want to see what I can do in terms of uh, doing uh, extra research on the topic that I'm doing currently, which involves composition. But uh, as a personal, uh, personal ambition or dreams, like one of it would be, I wanna focus on creating music and starting uh, to introduce myself to the world as, a, as an independent artist, meaning I will be writing songs for my own sake because I found that over the years, I only, I've been, I've been working uh, with a lot of, uh, I mean, I'm still looking forward to, but I, I've worked with uh, a lot of different, different kind of people in different, different kind of setting. That's true. And I'm still, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I still enjoy it, in fact. But I do want to start somewhere with my own uh, kind of legacy uh, when it comes to the legacy of Epic Ken, yes, um, independent artist, uh, bringing all the influences that I have gathered throughout the years and still exploring, adding on to what Eli said, because I believe exploration never ends until you, uh, you die, of course. Uh, and I hope I can bring all these influences, uh, which I must admit, not, uh, not very popular, like, I have this kind of a weird, I would say weird, like let's just like say it later on the table. I have this kind of weird taste in music because my main uh my main interest in music would be alternative actually and ambiance, um, film soundtrack. So these are the kinds of things that I feel like I must I must find uh connecting dots somewhere when I want to get creative in introducing myself by bringing all the influences that I've explored and still exploring into the table, mix them all up and produce and see what I can come up with, you know. And of course, finish my master, introduce myself as an independent artist and still be involved in this uh, music world uh, as much as I can. But I do not uh, wish to... I do not wish to only focus on music because I believe I'm also an art advocate. Come on. I mean, I'm friends with Eli. Uh, I, I myself fancy myself as, as a 
uh, dancing enthusiast, of course, but Eli is more uh, experienced in terms of that. So art in particular, I want to know more about what is this, uh, what is this sensation, as Eli mentioned just now, that we feel and keep exploring on that. So. And, and I'm so happy that we are all able to actually hone in on that creative arts uh, journey not individually yeah. but but together you know yeah and i i yeah. come on guys we we forgot about the one contract that decade contract where there will be one day in well now it's what in three years uh 2024 2025 where athit and arman will co-write a piece the jazz tune and then arman and eli will co-perform Eli like yeah. eli will be the host and then he'll like duet with arman on on the top Ooh. and i'll be in the in the audience and writing about it and giving a talk later about why this music is good. Yeah. So <laughs> the world is collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, honestly, we should try that one day. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Like we, sounds, we should actually try that cool. one day. I mean yeah. yeah, because like for me, you know, despite just being a host on the side, I could, you know, I could dance to like whatever you guys produce and you know, um Bobby on the other hand, you can be on a percussion and as well, write about like, you know, what we're all about, you know, make us understand what we're doing at the same time. So, but no, I mean, in, in a good way, because like, yeah, you yeah. know, when we're doing something like that, you know, we're putting so many elements together. We, we don't really understand what's, what's going on. And as, you know, out of all three of us, I think Bobby has, understands it more and he'll be able to write it down in context for us to understand properly. I mean, personally for me, I feel like Bobby will be able to do that. That but does I view it. Yeah. I mean it's it's all the way. Yeah, how you view at the same time, you know, learning and again, repeating myself for a billion time, exploring a bunch of new things that we've never done before. Mm. I'd be happy yeah. to if not for the whole world, if not for a crowd, then I'd be happy to just actually get a cup of wine and just sit down with you guys and actually talk about it, you know, like at like 3 a.m. and just like yes <laughs> okay so this is what happened on stage a few hours ago uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm just gonna say yeah, that's cool. a live yeah that'd be cool kind of guy so yeah yeah maybe some tea some coffee you know the things that go on throughout the day why not yeah so guys um thank you so much for like agreeing to sit down and thank you so much bobby for having us and sharing our sharing our friendships and our um, experiences with the rest of the world. And I'm so glad we got to do this. So ladies and gentlemen, it's been an honor and I hope to see you again soon. Hopefully with all the four of us again. So till then stay safe and stay gracious. I would agree. I would agree with Arman. Um, you know, I, again, once again, Bobby, thank you so much for like bringing us all together. Uh, as one, not on just a video call like we usually do, but actually talking about a real topic. Um, I want to our own experiences um, based on music and spiritually how we could actually connect to the music and understand what music is all about at the end of the day. Um, on the other hand, I would just like to tell everyone, uh, especially you guys, just keep on doing your thing. You know, like never you never give up on whatever that you're doing. You know when you feel like all hopes is lost just like look up to the sky and just know that how how high the sky is and you know it's just limitless dude no matter how high you're standing on the roof or whatever as soon as you look up that the sky is still way above you so yeah never stop never stop exploring never stop going up never stop being the best uh, version of yourself yeah all right so um I'll close my turn in this um in this round table, uh, margin round table. Let's say first, of course, I'll say this again. Uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, thank you so much, Bobby Rose, for hosting this uh, amazing podcast program, which he has been doing. And for those of you who are checking out this podcast particularly, do check out other stuff that Bobby up. Bobby is working on and uh, will come up with uh, soon. And of course, uh, to those of you who are listening, if you see like 
some of the names, uh, like my friend's name, anywhere that you see, do check them out because these people are the, I mean, Eli, Armand, Bobby. These are the, these are the amazing people that I wouldn't miss it uh, for the world to collaborate one day uh, in terms of music or arts, life in general, because you meeting you guys was such a was such a blessing and I'm grateful for it mm. and I will close with um, I hope this podcast would not be the last uh, podcast that we do together or the last activity that we do together uh, in terms of sharing thoughts and you know exchanging ideas and you know uh, some kind of motivation for all of us and I look forward to more. And I want to say just um, much love to all of you and God bless. Yeah, and uh, it, thank you so much for reminding me on that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I do forget, um, please, you, you can find uh, Arman, Eli, and Epid's uh, Instagram pages and their subsequent social media pages in the description of this video or on this audio podcast, depending on the platform that you're experiencing this on. But um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for, for saying those things because it's really a, a touching moment when, it, when, when you guys share about yourselves and talk about the real stuff because, okay, two things. First of all, I feel like this group is a culmination of the real world, of what people should be doing in the real world. You know, if we, um, some of the questions we were going through were, born because of the idea that, you know, once upon a time, our younger selves will always be like, I'm a music kid. I'm a, doesn't matter, like a performer or a composer or whatever. I'm a music kid. I got to be the best musician. But now yeah. after maturing, this is really a sign of us. Uh, this is one story. Arc. I feel like we finished that a few seasons together. And this is like a character development uh, section where it takes a community to grow, you know? And it takes a, a person who fell out, a person who uh, was stagnant at the time, a person who used to compose a lot, but it's not. And even me, I'm like writing emails just because we're all surviving. And in, in this, um, during this pandemic that we're talking about, but at the end of the day, we can't survive alone and we can't mature yeah. alone and we can't grow alone. Yes. Even if That's you true. think, even if you think that Oh, you know, I went through my high school and then tertiary education for some for those. I, I know a lot of people who didn't do the tertiary education, but still grew. But if you think that your high school and then you finish tertiary education and then you finish like now you're starting and working that, oh, I'm, I'm successful in life. Maybe you are, maybe you are. But in terms of character development, in terms of, I, I don't know, it's uh, people like Christopher Nolan will kind of disagree on, on your character arc. Uh, <laughs> And the second thing, the second thing that, which is the main point of this episode, honestly, is that we realize the important things to, to keep asking yourself every single day is those three main questions. Where, are, where you were, like where did you come from? How did you get to um, starting from 60 beats per minute to now you're doing like double time, 400 beats per minute. And then where are you now? Not, not that uh, Alan Walker song, like, like, uh, are you better than where you, <laughs> are you better than where you were like uh, a decade ago? It, it's, it's a very personal question. And the third thing is, where are you going from here? Not just yeah. in terms of, or oh, tomorrow I'm going to wake up or, or next month, I'm hoping the pandemic dies. No, it, it has to be a bigger picture than that. We're all stuck. So yeah. what? We're all locked down. Big deal. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that, uh, uh, you know, uh, high COVID numbers are a good thing. I'm just saying that, I don't know. If anything, I don't really know what I'm saying, but I guess that's why I need you guys to speak so that we can uh, conceptualize a community thought. Yeah. I guess at this point of time, it's, um, it's only fair for me to say, um, is to just enjoy the power and beauty of your youth. So, you know, I make the best of what's going to be happening uh, later on in the future. 
So yeah, this this doesn't go out just for me. This goes out for everyone here, uh, Bobby, Abid, Arman, and also you know everyone that's listening to this right now uh, up to this point. So yeah. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll, we'll call it a close on this week's episode. We thank you so much for uh, listening to this episode for, I don't know, it should be close to two hours now, maybe an hour plus. Uh, if, as usual, if you do have questions for a talk for the topic of character development, I would say, self-maturing, self-growth, um, send us an email, so give us a shout out, tag us on social media, send us a letter if people still do that. I, I don't think it's a good idea because yeah I mean like carbon footprint right so uh, with that ladies and gentlemen again thank you so much follow them on social media uh, to learn more about the music world my name is Bobby Rose I'm the host for this podcast we'll see you on the next one